I have a question for you. What would you buy for $12 US in US? Go ahead and comment right now. And here's my answer. I have seven pounds of pork back bones. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, No Chefs here. Where I live, the temperatures are low but comfortable. Makes it for a perfect light jacket weather. The sun is still shining. Some trees are changing color but not all of them. It's absolutely beautiful. You know, that means that all of your favorite comfort dishes are just going to be taste so much better. As the title suggests, the first one I'm going to make is this Korean style pork back bone soup. Can't wait, let's get started. So this first step is dedicated to cleaning the bones. Look how much meat there is too, that's awesome. So you see, they use machine and like a saw to cut them in pieces so there's going to be some bone fragments um, and of course some blood uh, remaining in the meat if you have time you can submerge them in water and soak overnight I have time but I don't have patience so I'm doing this enough water to cover the bones don't worry about the amount at this point all right so here's what's going on I set them to boil uh, on a high heat you see all the scum all that gunk so let them go, just like this, seven to 10 minutes. And now drain. Take a look in here. This is what we don't want. Now give them a nice wash to make sure that none of the particles and debris are present anymore. And if you're worried that some flavor was lost during these 10 minutes, trust me, we haven't even begun extracting all the flavor in these bones. We're gonna cook for so much longer. Pot nice and clean, bones going back in. Next on the list, I have like pretty good amount of ginger, nearly whole bulb of garlic here, and a yellow onion, a whole big one like this. So for the ginger, I'm not going to peel. Um, it's not going to be eaten, right? It's just for the stock. So I'm just gonna slice it with skin, actually more flavor. So with the garlic, these cloves are so huge. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a cut once to each one. Smaller cloves like this, just smashed, perfectly fine. I'll leave it alone. Onion. Rough chops, big pieces like this for the broth making, just fine. I think I'm gonna Try to distribute this onion somewhere in the middle. Garlic ginger. That worked. And now with hot water. All right, so I went with 16 cups of water total in here, which means if you buy individual packs of frozen bones in a freezer section of Asian market, those usually come in two pound packages. Uh, you would use four and a half cups of water, but don't worry, down in the description below, I will leave list of ingredients plus all the measurements. So now we'll set this on high heat, bring it to boil and simmer for one hour and 20 minutes. This is one of the times I wish I had a pressure cooker, but then again, I'm not sure if they come in this huge size. This is the type of simmer I'm looking for, low and slow. Hour, 20 minutes. Look at this beautiful broth. It smells amazing here. Let's give it a try. See, nice and clean. Really tasty. Blend, of course, because at this point, we didn't add any kind of uh, spices in here to be expected. Let's find a bone to test. Very, very tender. This is done. So next, I'm just going to take the bones, place them in a different dish. But look at how rich this broth looks like, okay? 
I'm going to strain it, but I'm down to basically the end. Some of them fell apart because they were so small. And uh, that's your bonus, you know, you can just try it out. Mm. So tender, unbelievable. So the next stage of this production, I'm going to strain the broth into these containers, like a restaurant style containers, and keep it. I'm sure there's more efficient way of doing it, but I'm making the video, so it needs to be set up here where I have a good light. All right, here's the result of the production, okay? Beautiful, clear, rich pork bone broth and a ton of bones. Actually, seven pounds to be exact. Or maybe less now, right? Because of cook down. What you could do now is let it cool down completely to room temperature and then put it in the freezer. And then every time you want to make something with a base like this, you have it. Now for the kamchatang ingredients, pretty easy. I looked through all of the bones, picked up some of the ones that have plenty of meat on. One green onion, just a pinch of bean sprouts. I got these two potatoes here. Kamjitang actually in Korean means potato soup. <laughs> and I don't know why, okay, but so gotta have some potatoes, even though it's a pork bone soup. I got three cloves of garlic here and one leaf of Napa cabbage. This time we need to mince garlic rather fine. With a green onion. Let's choose something for garnish. How about this one? The cabbage. I'm just going to tear it by hand. These potatoes. Just, uh, I guess I pick out these. I wanna keep the skin on, more tasty. But I want it to cook pretty fast, so I will actually cut really thin. They go into water so that they don't turn color. Now let's make the seasoning or flavor paste, okay? I have a tablespoon uh, red pepper flakes. Kuchijang is a red pepper paste, about a tablespoon. Soy sauce. If you guys have Korean soup soy sauce, that's better. One tablespoon. Fish sauce. Half a teaspoon. This stuff is pretty strong. If you guys have um, Korean anchovy sauce, that's better. But here we go. Fermented soybean paste. Dong jang. It's like this flat teaspoon. Now just mix. By the way, all this is for one to one and a half cup of uh, broth. But once again, don't worry. All of the ingredients are down below in description box. All right, now let's finally make the dish. This is a Korean earthware pot, tepegi. You don't have to use one of these, but the presentation of food like this in this is so much better. It's going to stay bubbly for a while, keep your food really hot. It takes a while for it to heat up. Something I want to say about this, if you get one of these, uh, don't wash it with soap because it's a natural material and it's very porous. It will absorb soap and give it back to your food when you cook. That's not really good. Just go ahead and wash it with hot water. And then if you really want to like clean it and sanitize, just fill it up with water about halfway, bring it to boil, let it boil for 10 minutes, then just, you know, toss it off. I'm going to go with a splash of sesame oil, have it heat up. Going in with garlic and onions. Cabbage goes in too. Hopefully you can hear it starts to sizzle a little bit. Just wilt the cabbage a little bit and uh, infuse the oil with garlic and onion. Meat goes back in. Potatoes. Seasoning paste. This delicious pork broth. When it starts to boil like this, 
I'm gonna go ahead and cover. Go for about 10 minutes until the potatoes are soft. 10 minutes in. Look at that beauty. Let's check the potatoes. Oh, definitely tender and done. See, one cup of the uh, broth is more than enough because other ingredients here give away some of the liquid. So don't be greedy. One cup is enough. Let's give this a taste, shall we? Mmm, that is so flavorful. I do think I can go with like a shake of salt. Let's bump up the heat a little bit. I'll go with bean sprouts. There you go, off the fire, still bubbling away. Perfect. I want to show you guys this tender bone meat. Look at it. Are you kidding me? Are you seeing this? Mm -mm -mm. Well, here we go. Super excited for this. Already tasted the soup during cooking, right? So let's go with... So I'm gonna go with this potato with um, cabbage and a little bit of a bean sprout in here, but it's hot. It's piping hot. Every culture has their own comfort food, but when it comes to Korean comfort food, it's like the next level, you know? It's unbelievable. When you eat this dish, you're not allowed to leave any kind of meat on the bone. Just kidding, but it would be highly recommended. Whether you like to take $12 to your local McDonald's or spend it on seven pounds of pork bone to make this week's worth of broth and bones to get creative with, I appreciate you all the same. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time. I wish you nothing but the best. Until then.